Hello, everybody. We're uh, second episode of that uh, crane uh, for the camera, and uh, it's going good. A few parts have uh, been done. We're making progress. Uh, like this top uh, top adapter for the tripod. We'll see uh, a few a few of the details of a. Uh, the end, uh, the end screw of those things. That little uh, bushing that's going to be inserted in the uh, in the top there, pressed down, glued with epoxy, and it's going to make this part go in there and hold on top there, steady. Uh, some grooves have been uh, made in the uh, in the adapter yet, but it's not going to be in today's part. But uh, part to come. It's already like uh, canned in the film. And uh, there's a part that uh, still in the late. You're going to see uh, the next progress being made on that by, uh, by the next episode, not episode two. It's still in there. Still need to be a little bit uh, worked out. This is the... Uh, adapter part that's going to go in this contain the uh, the bushings inside the uh, UHMW bushing bushings bearings you know uh, so working on this uh, we're about there I got uh, some parts some UHMW bearing bearings and bushings done that's going to be in episode 3 and uh, it's coming just like I say it's coming good and well and soon yeah, yeah. I had a comment from uh, uh, Roger, Roger Beaulieu, and I even answered in French. I think he's, uh, he's most likely a French uh, fellow. And um, just says, oh, I need to see better angle for uh, borings and uh, turnings and everything. It's exactly what the project is all about, because uh, uh, I'll show you after this, I'll, I'll get the camera off the tripod and I'll show you a little bit the organization here and uh, you see it's not that easy to really uh, get nice shots and uh, just uh, have a good vision and not bump into the uh, the equipment you know the uh, cinemat cinematographic equipment <laughs> because we're <laughs> in big business of cinema here um, so I hope it's going to improve a lot the fact that uh, it's going to be easier to position the camera over uh, equipment or uh, so in, in places where I don't uh, put my feet or bump uh, bump the uh, tripod with the, um, let's say when I maneuver the uh, machinery. So that's uh, exactly what that project is going on and I hope uh, it's going to give good results. And uh, it's not exactly the best of weeks, <laughs> I don't know. I just like I'm a little bit in the moon we're uh, easily distracted and I do <laughs> more goofs than usual and I'm, I'm playing it by ear with this and I'm gonna uh, go back and forth uh, <laughs> what I say a few times just uh, bear with me I guess it's gonna work in the in the end I'm a little bit my uh, my artistic uh, creation process is in the work so don't uh, don't hold it against me though okay uh, I'll show you just briefly how, how I'm set up here and maybe you'll uh, see why it's not that easy to give you um, super nice um, super nice shots uh, let me get the camera it's gonna be a little bit shaky but uh, we'll, we'll see so I just took it off from the late and um, I just had the uh, tripod on the end of the lathe there, and I got the DRO. It's a it's an old uh, an old DRO, or it's something like uh, I don't know, 50, 40 years old. I'm not sure. At least 25, 30 years old. It's it's very good though. It's func it's functioning like perfectly, and uh, the camera's right there, and the the, the and the tailstock is. Uh, kind of uh, see from the uh, 
distance from the tailstock to the, the chuck and everything. It doesn't give me lots of room, so I can't put the tripod closer to get better shots, overhanging shots, but uh, if you look here on the ground, I'm going to have room to this, you know, to uh, install a tripod where the the, uh, the broom is and uh, just with the the arm from the um, the crane it will be going up like under this and gonna, gonna be able to insert that over the tailstock and uh, have an overview of the uh, of the equipment there without having everything in the in the way or having to uh, stick the magnet on the tailstock or a carriage or whatever so I'll be able to just install you know like the camera over uh, overhanging and the other way it's pretty packed up but I'm going to be able to let's say put the tripod uh, in this area there too so like uh, and hovering at hanging over over the lake there the head and it's going to be about the same thing over the milling machine so that was just to give you a little uh, little overview of uh, the the situation about uh, you know how it's not always easy to give uh, give a nice uh, you know very defined and uh, like they always have the ideal uh, angle for showing what we do but I think with the crane they'll be much 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 better so uh, we'll uh, show you the few parts being done today and uh, I'll prepare the other episodes uh, for the other parts too so just bear with me and uh, we'll get to the end. Oh, I'm going to have to add uh, something today. I just went uh, inside and I crossed the mailbox and uh, there was a nice little uh, package. Nice envelope. It comes from uh, Tea Springs and uh, that's a t-shirt I ordered from uh, Randy Richards campaign. Uh, first, I like the t-shirt because it's been designed uh, by his daughter and I think she did a fantastic job at designing the uh, logos and the colors and everything. It, it's, uh, it's a fabulous design and uh, it's neat. It's, you know, it's really worth mentioning. And uh, Randy's been helping me a lot with uh, you know, he gave me a few good boosts for my channel and things like that. So I think I, uh, I got you know special, uh, special friendship for Randy, and uh, he's, uh, I think he's worthy of uh, a few good words. And uh, let's open up the package. I'm anxious to see the real thing. color it goes uh, it goes good in the machine shop that's for sure because gray like that is my favorite color Bl gray and black that's uh, just about all I wear so I need uh, I need colors that uh, I mean if you're sloppy it doesn't it, it, it must not show when you when you drop things on you so this is the front of the t-shirt and in the back we got the logo too and uh, I'll turn off the camera. Don't want to make a, you know, a, a tits show. So I'll try it and I'll show it to you. There we go. That's uh, Randy's t-shirt. Oh, I'm proud of wearing this. <laughs> it's nice. The back. I mean, I'm not too used to make fashion parades, but... Uh, I mean, okay, <laughs> there's a start, there's a start, <laughs> I can always uh, get into it, old folks fashion, but this is uh, all ages fashion. Thank you, Randy, and uh, I'll, I don't know, I'd like to wear it, but I don't want to wear it out, you know, like uh, wear it in, but not wear it out, but okay, you'll probably see me a few times with this uh, machining. 
Okay, now we're making that little part there, uh, that little bushing that goes into the end of the extension. It's uh, 675, let's say, and about a half, one and a half inch long. It's going to be uh, tapped a uh, quarter 20. And uh, let's make it 675. We're calibrating the. Uh, Let's measure this with the micrometer. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. It's more than an inch. Let's use this one. Okay, one inch and 75,000. 1.075 let's go for this we'll face and then we'll calibrate the uh, z-axis at the same time okay z0 675 sorry we go uh, 900 a little bit for an inch and a half a little over what the hell's going on with this okay now I know I had my uh, my, my uh, screwing uh, arm partially uh, engaged, so that's what uh, bugged me. Okay, we're going. It's 900 and a few thousands. We're going for a little bit over an inch and a half. One of those days I'm going to be uh, checking for aluminium, aluminium inserts. Sometimes it goes good, sometimes it just comes in my face, just like that. Okay. Now we can go to 675. Or is it going to be too much? No. Oh. Okay. Still got a few thousands to take. Let's go. Okay, now we're gonna make a sander hole in there. And drill for a quarter 20. Which is drill number seven. Okay. That's going good. That's right, too. <clears throat> We're going to slow down the lathe just to uh, not break up everything. How much? Well, said slow but uh, they're slow and they're slow okay that's going to be slow <laughs> at 
it's just okay let's throw this in there before it breaks I think we'll uh, do some hand tapping just in case you know at the price they're selling the taps I wouldn't want to break it I don't only really have good taps so and once they're started it's easy to uh, continue I don't think this is my best tap though one thing I forgot to do is uh, do a nice chamfer on the end of this <laughs> helps but we'll do it after I hate forgetting things we'll do a little chamfer when you do a chamfer on a uh, on something that's been tapped you rarely get something very even because um, when you start treading it just goes like you got more ma material relief from one side and the other that's why we are uh, prone getting the uh, chamfers before but there are little tools that will help uh, the way doing those chamfers uh, right it's uh, these kinds of chamfering tools. I don't know if it's going to focus. Not that that distance. These kinds of chamfering tools, they don't grab as much, and uh, they can make something like reasonably even. That's what I'm going to use. Let's go. And while we're not running fast will get the best results a little bit of oil there we go that one good and uh, just to maybe complete this a little clean up of the first treads. Yep, that does it nice. Break the edge. Use a cutoff tool and the get rid of this little piece one more thing done uh, that can be eyeball because I'm gonna pressure it down the uh, down the holder and uh, doesn't matter if it's a little a uh, little bit of a difference so it's one and a half we're clearing Okay, that's uh, should be pretty good. There wasn't much. There we go. Nice little part. It's gonna go right down, right down this little, uh, this end of the tripod. It's gonna be pressed in here, and it's gonna, that's gonna stay permanently in there. I'm gonna clean up the back though, but uh, go permanently in there, and it's gonna be 
to hold the, uh, the top part I just made, if I can find it. Uh, there it is. It was under my uh, my nose. It's uh, going there. There's going to be a hole in this part there. And uh, chambered screw. And once it's pushed inside there, it's going to hold everything together. The top part. I'm going to make the hole in the, uh, in the middle there. Chamber it and uh, make it ready for uh, the um, thing or the, the to hold in the uh, in the top the extension part I added the masking tape not to mar the uh, surface there because it's kind of my surface uh, you know my finished surface and uh, I, ex I exactly did two turns I want to uh, like a I want to get the same adding all over uh, all over the side and I'm putting the uh, small part overlapping there between two uh, two jaws uh, just making it tight enough and it's like uh, being gentle not to uh, not to break anything but uh, it's not it's not a demanding operation so I don't have to worry about uh, you know something that's uh, got to be held like if I'd be taking like a one inch cuts in there okay we're gonna center drill this it's gonna be better the hole is gonna be a quarter of an inch and uh, by using a quarter 20 uh, cap screw we'll um, determine exactly what uh, what kind of a shape or uh, digging we're doing this okay a little bit more okay quarter inch hole And with this, we're within a few thousands, so and uh, like concentricity and things like that, we don't have to worry too much about that. There we go. I just did some measurements, and uh, I took a little bit more inside to make my clearance hole for uh, boring and. Uh, we're gonna have to use some flathead uh, quarter 20 so I got uh, an 82 degree here uh, an 82 degree chamfer tool so uh, that's gonna be healthier because otherwise we don't have enough material inside let's go for the low chamfer it's not gonna be a big job hopefully Oops, if you got some um, chatter when you get the um, tool working like that, you can just slow down the leg because these kinds of tools uh, don't really uh, like very high speeds. It's gonna make, and it makes nicer jobs. Reamers too have a tendency to uh, chatter when they're uh, run at high speed and they don't make us so, uh, so nice of a finish. There we go. Easy like that, and it does make a perfect job. No, uh, no shimmer at all. That's a perfect gem for. And that part is uh, kind of uh, almost uh, almost finished, unless I do uh, have an other ideas for it. Let's move to the next part and uh, something that will go on top of that. Uh, now let's make let's make the part that goes on top of this here. This will go right there, and uh, I want to make some 
UHMW bushings. Some are going to be inserted in grooves in there. And uh, this will hold it there. And I want to make uh, some groove in the middle. And uh, something that will just press with a screw and stop it from turning. So we'll get at it. Okay, next step is going to be to uh, make uh, the part that goes on top of the adapter. I'm going inside there, boring. So just enough for the bearings to fit in there. The depth of this plus top bearing and uh, that's gonna be uh, the next step <clears throat> okay yeah okay, I will need to drill one inch and uh, a little bit more than a quarter. That's about it. And <clears throat> to help myself, I'm going to make the hole a little bit bigger. That's easy to bore, but uh, let's make it one inch. Sounds like big bunch of monsters coming in the aluminium. Add a little bit of oil just to ease it up. Okay, that should be enough. These are big bad chips. <clears throat> you should see the chip pan on this late. Mm. I'll need a big pail to shove this all in there. Here you go. This is kind of a lazy chip pan it's about uh, I don't know three a little bit more than three feet long so the light is a it's 40 40 inches long uh, between the tips and uh, let's say it's a 3500 pounds late so like uh, it's got a pretty nice chip pan in there Just to give you an idea. Okay, the pan is uh, starting about there, right to that bar or the uh, the edge of the lake. There, it's 16 inches, so and it's overflowing. <laughs> what a drag! Okay, now you've seen the lazy guy's chip pen. <laughs> there we go. Let's put that away. Now we'll uh, bore the rest. Let's make sure the depth of this. So this is like... Uh, one inch and... 155 plus 125 so 
one inch, 275. 280. Shit. 270. One inch, 270. <clears throat> Let's measure this. One inch two o oh, three. That's one point two zero three. So it's going to be one inch five hundred and ten. Let's go right down and we'll surface the bottom of this. That's clean. make the bearing surface a little bit bigger in the bottom of this because the drill the drill is making a point in the end of this and uh, and I want I want to get uh, rid of some of that point to make the uh, surface the flat surface a little bit wider so we'll go uh, Give it a little bit more. This is what I call a boring bar. We must be getting about a uh, Lots of stuff. This is what I call chips. <clears throat> it's going to focus when it's close. This is what I call chips. <laughs> These must be. Uh, huh. Oh, they're about uh, quarter five sixteenth with a boring bar like that. Five sixteenth per side. Yeah, that makes a nice cut. My bearing surface is nice. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna clean this up. Perfect. Five oh eight. And after that, we'll try the uh, UHMW and see how it fits in there. This surface must be as smooth as possible inside. I want it to um, not wear out the um, the bearings, you know.
that got a big chunk. Let's go clean this up. Now, I can say it's not my best day for uh, machining, mostly doing thing by ear. I think today I would even have problems with a good schematic. So, but finish is nice. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's see if this fits in there. Oops, I think I'll have to get a little larger. Okay, I'm going to get another uh, let's say six, seven thousands. I was at uh, 